Alright, uh, next up on the card was Jeff Hardy putting the TNA belt on the line against uh, New Japan Breakout stuff 2010, Tetsuya Naito, not going to talk about it, um, it was weird, uh, one star and three quarter, I mean, those, never knows that really how like, crappy it was. So anyway, let's go into the last three matches. Show have been good thus far in my opinion, one great and two good matches is fantastic for a show of his caliber uh, prior to getting to the last three matches. Uh, couldn't ask much more, really. Uh, we had Noah B. New Japan Battle Combustion 2, uh, which involves Shinjuke Nakamura and Go Shizaki in their third singles match in their little series. Uh, Go was sporting um, one of those rhizome haircuts, as I like to call them. Uh, looked silly. I liked his hair when it was thick and messy, like Robert, Robert Smith. Um, limb work began early with Go going for Nax knee and and leg, uh, thus negating the effect of the bombe. Uh This occurred in their match, in the first match as well, I believe. I haven't seen the second match. Um, it's an easy way to tell a story, I guess. Um, yeah, safe. Uh, Nak then fought back and hit a big left knee, which, this was good because Go was working his right knee. I can't remember what knee Nak uses primarily uh, for the majority of his offense. A uh, slight botch when Nak went for a defensive transition into the cross arm breaker. Um, he just like missed Go's arm or something. Uh, not a massive deterrent, but just something I noticed. A uh, really cool spot up next though, uh, Nax started working Go's arm to eliminate the Lariat, but Go used it straight away before his arm conceded more damage. Uh, crowd really popped with this. Crowd didn't pop with a one count which followed, which was odd. I thought it was sweet. Uh, match was getting stiff. Now you could tell the crowd really wanted the momentum, momentum to increase at around the three quarter mark, but it didn't Seemed like it was going to. Um, then Go pulls another Lariat. At this point, you, uh, you're thinking Knack has failed. You know, he has failed to work Go's Lariat arm uh, more. So get a Knack a genuine, genuinely looked uh, finished, in my opinion. Uh, Go used the Go Flasher and Knack kicked out twice. Uh, Go figures he steals one of uh, Nakamura's signatures, the flipping release, leg hook, belly to back, but uh, Knack evades it. Nakamura then gets the one with the bomb, yeah. It, it would have been sweet to see Nak get the one with perhaps like a cross arm bar or something um, after working the arm a little bit, but that didn't happen. Um, anyways, like, good match. Was definitely missing something, though. More momentum towards the end, perhaps, but I still enjoyed the pace that it did adopt. Um, three stars and three quarters, almost four, four stars. Good psychology, not a huge match, which was really good, like... You had some good matches and a, and a great match uh, prior to this one. So this is sort of a um, good transition match almost. It just it, it just worked well. I was in a good spot after this match. So getting on to the next one was the rematch from the Climax Special. And Toggy's uh, first defense of the heavyweight post G1. Uh, that match was fantastic. There was so much energy. Um, I, expected, I expected nothing less for this one. Uh, so we had former IWGP heavyweight champ Togi Makabe taking on former ECW and Zero One heavyweight champ uh, Masato Tanaka. Couldn't wait for this. Uh, there must be blood, I was thinking, uh, just prior to watching it. So Tanaka getting the upper hand early on as a result of some high tempo stuff. Tanaka working the heel. I mean, he always does it well. I mean, I love both these guys. They both have the natural flair. Well, more so Makabe, but he, he, I mean, he's got so much flair, it's unbelievable. Uh, Tanaka working Makabe's neck, then throwing him to the outside, giving Makabe time to recuperate, and make the quick comeback by getting the angs and making the mistake right away. Uh, super comeback by Makabe. This is going to be a very back and forth match but at, the, at the current um, pace that I was watching it. Uh, then there was the stiff brain buster through the table. Um, like, this match didn't need any blood anymore. Uh, this spot had been built upon for a while, I think, pre-match, but I thought it needed more build than this actual match to that spot. Um, awesome stuff with the suplex, uh, no sell from Tanaka, and then going for the sliding D on the back of Makabe's neck. Um, that looks fantastic. Uh, some selling inconsistencies next for the build-up to the regular sliding D, but nothing too bad. Uh, here it was that Makabe was going to win, but they needed uh, Tanaka to look good as well so they can give him as much time as possible on the offense and Makabe couldn't really cope with it as he is like an offensive kind of guy uh, I think as well um, it didn't really tarnish the match that much uh, big power bomb on Tanaka onto the outside onto the table um, 
would have been cool without the table, like, Tanaka, you're a pussy, joking, um, I would never say that to his face, uh, sorry, Masato, uh, three stars and one quarter, so, good. Next up was, oh, it, was oh, it was main event time, uh, for Japan's most illustrious title, the IWGP Heavyweight Championship, with the champion and G1 winner, Satoshi Kojima, defending his well-earned but short-lived pedigree against Challenger, and one that needs no introduction, ace of the company, Hiroshi Tanahashi. My last review uh, covered the G1 final, which included both these competitors, and it was largely, and it was completely off the hook, and if you bother, bother bothered to look uh, at my top 10 matches, this is my match of the year uh, for 2010, the G1 final. I mean, if you haven't seen the match, um, you're a bit of an idiot. Uh, video package displayed various images of the past, inclu including the time Kojima threw down the championship, the same championship. Uh, this was going to be great, Expect expectations high, uh, hard to exceed, did they exceed? Let's find out. Okay, did some grand, grand stuff to start off with, uh, working out who was the better, better technical wrestler. Uh, Tanahashi went for the, the Larry arm to start off with, different tactic than last time. He went for the other arm first the last time, and then moved on to the Larry arm. That didn't work, because you yeah, watched my last review, you would know that he lost. So why not just go for the Larry arm from the outset? Uh, I was liking it. Tanahashi's got the smarts. Whoops. Kojima forgot he had his arm destroyed for a minute or so. He went on the offense with his lariat arm. Pity. He was selling it uh, very little. It didn't bother me too much. I guess Tenahashi didn't work on it for too long, I suppose. Uh, last time, Kojima going for... Well, like last time, Kojima uh, was starting to go for one of the legs of Tenahashi, so he prevented him from going for the high fly flow, I guess. Um, Kojima using strikes and submissions like the half crab and the scorpion hold. Despite the similarities to the previous match, there were some differences as well. Um, if I can recollect accurately, uh, Tanahashi worked in Kojima's uh, arm a little longer, or a lot longer, I can't remember. Tanahashi was selling great, and Kojima worked the crowd beautifully. Kojima started working on Tanahashi's neck from a sort of neck breakers, I think, uh, softening those tender joints for the lariat finish. Kojima, uh, Kojima went for the lariat rather early in the match, but Tanahashi cut it off rather early as well, so that was good. Um, Tanahashi executing what looked like the perfect trap German suplex. Um, he may as well get it in while he can. Uh, Tanahashi tried to finish the match quite early on as well and had some had the same idea as Kojima with the high fly flow and then tried it again to finish Kojima, Kojima but Kojima jagged his knees up just in time. So he had a few cut off uh, finishes or cutting off of finishes there. It turns out that Kojima does uh, use his other arm for the lariat. Well, I mean, he had to here, because this was just after Tanahashi had given his other arm one or two dragon screws, which looked cool as well. <coughs> Great drama towards the end. It, it had everything that is swell. Cut-off moves, Takahashi ducking two lariats, ta uh, ta Tanahashi, sorry, evading two lariats and executing two dragon suplexes. It was an awesome match. I mean, some little selling problem, but that didn't matter. They were hardly noticeable. Around, th around three quarters uh, of the things looked, uh, around the three quarter mark, sorry, it looked a little lost, but things picked up again and the match produced great drama. Uh, did, did it exceed the G1 final? I don't know. Uh, it was a little more complicated, I think. Um, I'm giving it four stars and a quarter. So no, I guess I didn't exceed it, but it certainly didn't fail either. Love this match. Uh, the show gets, uh, pardon me, eight out of ten. All right. Last uh, review for a while. Hope you liked it. Um, see you guys. See you around, guys.